JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for August the 11th. I am Harald Lambos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded lower against uh, the majority of the other G10 currencies on Monday and during the Asian morning Tuesday. It underperformed against the uh, NOC, CAT, the Aussie, the Kiwi and the Pound in that order, while it decked out uh, gains only versus the Euro, the Japanese Yen and the Swiss Franc. The Greenback was found virtually unchanged against SEC. The strengthening of the commodity-linked currencies, combined with the weakness in the safe haven, suggests uh, that financial markets traded in a risk-on fashion. Indeed, turning our gaze to the equity world, we see that the EU indices were a sea of green with a positive, with a positive morale rolling into the US session. Both the Dow Jones and the S&P 500 gained 1.30 and 0.27% uh, respectively, with the exception being Nasdaq, which slid 0.39% as investors uh, seem to have turned into value stocks from heavyweight tech-related names. Sentiment remained supported uh, during the, Asia, the Asian session today as well, with Japan's uh, Nikkei 225, China Shanghai Composite and Hong Kong's Hang Seng gaining 1.81, 0.46 and 2.63% respectively. After talks in uh, the US Congress over a new coronavirus aid bill uh, failed, fell apart on Friday, uh, on Saturday US President Trump signed executive orders and memorandums aimed at unemployment benefits, evictions, student loans and payroll taxes, which may have been the reason behind the sanguine investor morale. What may have also helped uh, are Sunday comments by House uh, Speaker Nancy Pelosi and uh, Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin uh, that uh, they are open to restarting talks. In an interview with CNBC yesterday, Mnuchin added that uh, the Trump administration and Congress could reach an agreement as soon as uh, this week if Democrats are uh, reasonable. Apart from developments surrounding the new fiscal stimulus package in the US, investors are also awaiting a meeting between top US and Chinese officials on, on Saturday, in which they are expected uh, to review the first uh, six months of the Phase 1 trade accord. That said, the relationship between the world's two largest economies does not appear to be a rosy one. Last week, uh, Trump uh, unveiled sweeping bans on Chinese tech firms uh, TikTok and Tencent, with China, uh, while China imposed sanctions on 11 Americans uh, yesterday in uh, retaliation for U.S. sanctions on Chinese officials over Hong Kong. On top of that, yesterday, Treasury, Treasury Secretary Mnuchin said that uh, companies from China and other countries that don't comply with the U.S. accounting standards will be delisted from U.S. stock exchanges as of the end of 2021. The markets appear to have remained broadly immune to developments surrounding the US-China saga, and it remains to be seen whether this will be the case for the rest of the week. If so, a potential accord in the US Congress may add further fuel in investors' morale, pushing equities and other risk-linked assets further up and safe havens down. Back to the G10 currencies, the oil-related knock and cut were the main gainers getting an extra boost from the rising oil prices. Both Brent and WTI gained 0.63 and 0.77% respectively yesterday, as apart from the broader appetite, Saudi, Saudi Aramco's uh, CEO Amin Nasser said that he sees oil demand rebounding in Asia as economies gradually open up. 
Now, tonight, apart uh, from developments surrounding the broader market sentiment, Kiwi traders may also pay attention to the RBNZ monetary policy decision. At its uh, previous gathering, the RBNZ decided to keep interest rates and its large-scale asset purchase program unchanged, with officials noting that uh, their nation has contained the spread of the virus, enabling an earlier resumption of economic activity than assumed in May. However, they highlighted that uh, the appreciation of their local currency has placed further pressure on exports and that the balance of economic risks remains to the downside, adding that they remain willing to ease their policy further if deemed necessary. Now, in the second quarter, inflation slowed in New Zealand to 1.5% year-over-year from 2.5%, but this is still higher than the bank's own forecast for the quarter, which was at 1.3% year-over-year. Thus, this may allow our BNZ officials to stand pat for another meeting, but with the Kiwi slightly higher against the dollar than it was the last time they met, we also expect them to reiterate concerns over its appreciation, as well as their readiness to ease further if needed. As uh, for the Kiwi, if the RBNZ reiterates concerns over its appreciation, it could slide. However, its broader, its, uh, broader direction is likely to stay mostly linked to developments surrounding the broader market sentiment. If the US Congress reaches consensus and the US-China tensions ease somewhat, the currency is likely to resume its prevailing uptrend, especially against the safe haven dollar. That said, further strength in the QE could increase the chances for, ad for additional stimulus by the RBNZ at one of its upcoming gatherings. Now, as uh, for today's events, during the European morning, the UK employment report for June is due to be released. The unemployment rate is forecast to have risen to 4.2% from 3.9%, while average weekly earnings, including bonuses, are expected to have declined 1.2% year-over-year after sliding 0.3% in May. The excluding bonuses rate is uh, also expected to have fallen to minus 0.1% year-over-year from plus 0.7%. The case for a weak uh, report is supported by the KPMG and REC UK report on jobs for the month, in which it was noted that starting pay for both permanent and short-term staff fell further in June as demand for workers uh, remained weak and labor supply continued to increase. From Germany, we get the ZW survey for August. The current conditions index is expected to have increased to minus 68.8 from minus, minus 80.9, but the economic sentiment one is anticipated to have slid to 58 from 59.3. This suggests uh, that analysts' uh, opinions with, re with regards to the current performance of the German economy have improved uh, following the agreement between Eurozone's members over a coronavirus-related rescue fund, but fears over a second wave of infections in Europe may have raised questions with regards to the future. The Euro skyrocketed in the aftermath of uh, the deal over the rescue package, but another round of accelerating infections may be the trigger for a decent outside correction. Later in the day, Canada's housing starts and the US PPIs both for July are coming out. Canada's housing starts are forecast to have slowed somewhat, while the US PPI headline rate is forecast to have ticked uh, up to minus 0.7% year-over-year from minus 0.8%. The core rate is expected to have rebounded to 0.1% year-over-year from minus 0.3%. With regards to the energy market, the American Petroleum Institute weekly report on crude oil inventories is coming out, but as it is always the case, no forecast is currently available. We also have one speaker on today's agenda, and this is San Francisco Fed President Mary Daly. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much uh, for watching and listening. For those who are interested in uh, learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm hosting every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT time. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.